believe today her jumper is going to be key for what West Virginia defense gives her. All right, set to go. The officials for today's game, Mark Gentz, Kevin Tuckle, and Meta Christensen. Nye Black against Green. And the Mountaineers have the first possession. Gondrasik, Nye Black. And Tennessee had the rebound but lost it. Great steal there by Deans. And a whistle. Shot clock problem. And the foul, drawing the foul, Martinez. Down for North Tennessee, team foul number one. At the line for West Virginia, Miss Mary Martinez. Well, Martinez, 8 of 15. The Mountaineers did not shoot the ball well from the free throw line in, its, uh, in their win over University of North Alabama on Thursday. Yeah, Lanny, just 21 of 36 from the free throw line, as you mentioned on Thursday. That's something that they're going to have to clean up. In those closer games, they can be won and lost at the free throw line. And the steal by Knobloch. Baseline. Laid in well by Gondrasik, a 3-0 West Virginia lead. And that's a great read by Gondrasik. Uh, the entire action of the play was headed to the right. She just gives one little shot fake, and that left lane was wide open. Davis. And the rebound by Nablack. And you see right away, West Virginia really sagging back defensively, allowing Tennessee to beat them from the three. Not a great sh three-point shooting team, only at 28% right now. Ball knocked out of bounds by uh, Davis. Third game of the year for Tennessee, fourth game of the year for West Virginia. Both teams undefeated. Not to Gondrasek. KK Deans. And the ball to Suarez from, J from, uh, J from uh, Spain. And out of bounds, it is Tennessee's ball. Head coach for Tennessee, second year for Kelly Harper, a record of 23 and 10. Inbounded by Walker. Jumper no good by Burrell, but the rebound is put in by Suarez. A big miscue defensively for the Mountaineers there, not switching on those screens. You get out of position for the rebound and return, and Suarez is able to clean it up. And I Black, unable to connect. 3-2 West Virginia. Three no good by Walker. Quickly up the floor, out in front to Smith. Great pass back to Gondrasik. Yeah, a beautiful extra pass, and that's something that Coach Harper told us yesterday that she was a little worried about defending in transition. West Virginia likes to get on the boards and push that fast break quickly. And Tennessee's got to do a better job of recognizing uh, those cues and getting back defensively. Walker, the redshirt junior, guarded by Smith. And West Virginia just really kind of hanging back defensively, trying to force them to take those threes. And hey, why not? Jordan Walker, that's a great three. If they're going to give you that shot, you're going to have to knock them down because West Virginia is going to give it to them. And for the Mountaineers today, as we just mentioned, Tennessee, not a great three-point shooting team. They're going to have to defend penetration. And then, like we said, crash the boards and push in fast break. That's where a lot of offense is generated for the Mountaineers. And Nye Black with a three. That's a three. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, as Mary, excuse me. As Mary has four points early. And the foul going to the basket, second foul of the game. Monitors lead 8 4. And that's a nice Walker's defensive first play. Foul. Excuse me. Sorry, Lanny. That's a nice defensive play by Kaiser in, in drawing the foul. But back to Esmeri. I mean, if she can start to utilize that three point shot and really make defenders have to come out and guard her, in addition to how strong she is in the post, she is going to be a huge force in the Big 12. Gondrasik averaging 21.7 points per game in the first three. Eight of nine at the free throw line this year. Gondrasik from Benton Harbor, Michigan. And a violation with the uh, inbound play. And those are just mental errors that you cannot afford to make in a game like this. But for Tennessee, they've got to take care of the ball. And for example, right there, you have to take care of possessions. And then we talked about their transition defense. They've got to make a, a solid effort of getting back because West Virginia will push the ball. Martinez shot off the rim rebound. But the uh, whistle and a foul, pushing foul against the Mountaineers. Dean's first West Virginia foul of the game. But that's what West Virginia is going to do. They're never really going to allow you to get a clean uh, look at a rebound. They're going to come after you. You got to get good position. You got to go rip the ball right from them because they're going to come crashing. Horston off the bench for Tennessee. And a good move there. And Burrell, her first two points of the game. And that's a great take. She elevates so well. She's already six foot one when she's uh, driving the lane and, and getting up for her that jumper. You got to get a hand in her face and stay low. Gondrasek fires one from outside the arc. No good. Ball goes out of bounds. It was off Martinez's hands. Approaching the halfway point of this first quarter. for uh, Tennessee. Tamari Key comes in. Suarez checks out. Horston. And I know what Coach Carey's saying right now. Yes, we're going to try to make them beat us from three, but you still at least got to get a hand in the face. You can't completely have your hands down and, and you know, challenge them to take that shot. You got to play them honest. And foul. As we are just a second away from the halfway point of the first quarter. And West Virginia lucks out with a foul right there. That was not the angle for the entry pass into the post. You got to get that over to the right a little bit more. But uh, as I said, West Virginia lucks out with a foul on Tennessee. Smith with the inbound to Martinez. And another foul. This one is against the Mountaineers. Offensive foul. And a timeout. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, West Virginia by one. Well, Lanny, much like everything in 2020, this relationship between the 6'2 freshman from Spain, Marta Suarez, and Tennessee was built virtually. Coach Harper said her recruitment was all via Zoom. They were doing some international recruiting. And when they saw Suarez, they thought she'd be a great fit at Tennessee and really just had what they were looking for. Harper says she adds a completely different dimension at the small forward position. She can play one through four, but right now they really need her versatility at the four. And she said as far as a language barrier, well, that hasn't been an issue. She's a very intelligent player, and they're looking for her leadership, even though she is new to this team here today, guys.
Davis from the elbow. Strong rebound there by, by Tennessee and Key. And out of bounds off the shot by Renaya Davis. West Virginia at one point led by six, now has the one point lead. In this Big 12 SEC challenge. Mountaineers are 0 and 6 against Tennessee. And Martinez called for the travel. And this is uh, this is Tennessee's first trip to Morgantown since January of 1986. Esmeri Martinez came up wincing a little bit after that, but she's just got to be a little bit more aware. Take one dribble off of that ball screen, and get a pull up. There's no room in the paint right there for Tennessee. You got to recognize that uh, immediately. Horston dumps it off, comes out now to, and a whistle and a foul against Tennessee. Horston's first foul of the game. Last time the Lady Vols played in West Virginia was in Charleston in 2007. And my partner Mick Bolger played in that game. Under six shot is blocked. Well done there by by Key. But that's not a bad take. West Virginia, they run those ball screens. You have to come off of them hard. You have to make Tennessee guard you and play you in the paint and really start to extend them. And that will start to open up the paint. They need to hit outside shots. That will also open it up. But when they come off of those ball screens, they've got to get to the rim because right now Tennessee can just pack it inside. And Madison Smith's shot no good. Tennessee on the attack. Three on two. And the shot no good by Burrell. Out of bounds, 3.30 left in the first quarter. This game just has a, a very different pace. It's, it's very slowed down, a lot of half-court offenses. Uh, you're really not seeing anything in transition, which I give credit to Tennessee. That's what they really wanted to do was slow down that transition break from West Virginia. 15-footer by Nye Black. Kari's first two points of the game. Been a while since we had seen a point or two. And, and thank you to Kari for using those elbows. That's exactly the sweet spots right there with Tennessee packing the paint. They're guarding those ball screens. You got to come off of that screen and utilize that area. Horston shot no good. Rebound and... The battle between two Mountaineers there. Tennessee gets the ball under its basket. Walker to inbound it. Walker from Muskegon, Michigan. And Horston. Walker comes off the uh, iron with the ball on the pass into Key. Mari Key, and now limping is Norris. Norris to the bench, and uh, Blessing Edgefor comes in. And you can see with Norris down, KK Deans had to go to that weak side for help, and uh, just wide open, great find by Horston down low. And a tie up. Possession arrow favors Tennessee. And Tennessee doing a great job of really taking away Jump those screens, uh, those on ball screens of West Virginia. They're getting up in those lanes, forcing West Virginia to come out uh, past the three point line to make passes, and they just don't have the angles right now. They've got to get that offense moving. Key. And a great block there by Nye Black. Eighth all time of the West Virginia block shot list. Scramble a loose ball and Tennessee comes back with it. 
key. Traveling call. Basket doesn't count. Man, Key, Key wants that back. And West Virginia had a, a big time miscommunication down low. Nye Black uh, not seeing Key behind her. Man, all she needed to do was one little pump fake, pump fake, excuse me, uh, but shuffled her feet a little too much. Gondrasek. And that was picture perfect. You get low, you come off of the screen, right shoulder to shoulder, and you have that jumper wide open. And the turnover in favor of West Virginia. This one off the uh, hand of Key. And so Gondrasek's got eight points in the uh, first quarter. Checking in for the Lady Volunteers number 13, Keon Green. Tennessee right now just doing a great job of getting in the lanes, forcing West Virginia to stay out. But hey. Kaiser, if you're out there, you might as well take it. You got to keep them honest. But Tennessee doing a really nice job of taking West Virginia out of their offense right now. Gondrasek, 11 points. Horston, dump off and laid in by Kuchkitawa. Number 11, This final minute of the first quarter. You can see right now, West Virginia, there's already so much time taken off the shot clock. They still have not, you know, really even gotten into the paint at all or gotten a good look. Five seconds on the shot clock and the shot errant by Nye Black. Half a minute. And that's just a, a bad offensive possession by West Virginia. Fifteen. Worston shot is wide, out of bounds off KK Deans. Here's uh, Hemingway coming in for West Virginia. And Suarez back in for Tennessee. Also in for Tennessee number. Davis back in. Just under seven seconds left in the first period. Tipped in by Kush Kamara. Kush Kittawa comes in and comes up with four significant points at the end of the first quarter. Big 12. Now, one three, three twos, and two ones for the 11. Nye Black to put the ball in play from in front of us as we get the second quarter underway. What a, a great job defensively by Horston for Tennessee. It forces Kaiser Gondrick to catch the ball, you know, not even in shooting range. Immediately has to put the ball on the floor. She's completely trapped, and then you see the turnover. That's just a great job by, by Horston. Kushkidawa. Suarez. And Shot by Davis, no good. Tried to get her rebound. Other way, Hemingway. Tennessee doing a nice job of getting back there in transition. Little Madison Smith for three points of the game. And even though that's a quick pull on the three, you've got to get those shots. There's been a few possessions now. West Virginia's come down. They have not even gotten a good look. So if Madison sees it, if Kaiser sees it, they need to pull the trigger. And Tennessee's ball. Ball kicked out by Gondrasek. And Suarez putting the ball in play. Uh, Kelly Harper, head coach of Tennessee, telling us that the recruiting of Suarez from Spain was all done virtually. 
And then she got here this summer. You know, didn't really know when she was going to be able to get there. Had to quarantine for two weeks. What a nice dump off down low. Just an easy, easy left-handed layup for Suarez. But, uh, you know, and to think coming from Spain, you don't know when you're going to arrive. She quarantines. You know, then you come in, you have a month, you learn the system, and then you start as a freshman at Tennessee. That's pretty incredible. Haven't seen Martinez in a while. Meg mentioned that she seemed to tweak her ankle and driving for the basket and laying it in. Easy layup for Burrell. And Tennessee, they're, they're too aggressive defensively for West Virginia to think they're just going to dribble around and, and set picks that really aren't there. They're not utilizing the picks, and they're dribbling, dribbling too much. Ball blocked by Horston. And Burrell gives Tennessee its first lead of the game. Martinez getting ready now to come back into the game. I mean, you see West Virginia stagnant. There's no movement, too much dribbling. They really don't reverse the ball. Now there's nine seconds on the shot clock. What are you going to do? That's, that's a, a, a tough defensive possession for, for Tennessee. But West Virginia might get bowed out right here. Smith was fouled by Green. Foul call on Tennessee. Madison Smith from Greenville, South Carolina. Ready to shoot two. Smith averaging in the first three games just under 10 points a game. And really, Lanny, I don't know if you've noticed, I feel like the second quarter, there's a little bit more energy between these two teams. I thought in the uh -huh. first quarter, uh, you know, it was a little bit dull. It was very half court esque. Um, not a lot of movement. You can feel the energy. I think the girls are kind of uh, relying on each other uh, to create some sort of an atmosphere and get that energy up. But it's, it, it's completely different than the first quarter. Almost empty Coliseum. Uh, Tennessee, by the way, played its first two games in front of a maximum of 2,200 folks in each game. So Smith misses both free throws. Tennessee by two, Suarez traveling. In violation, and West Virginia has it. Yeah, she, Suarez made her decision just a little bit too late. I thought that she could have continued on on the left side and just tried to draw a foul, but made the decision to, to dump it off, and she gets caught with the travel. Martinez back in. Martinez, three games this year, has two of her career double-doubles. Martinez missed the shot. Tennessee back. Davis. West Virginia making it, they're just making it too easy right now. There's no denying the next pass. Uh, there's some mismatches height-wise. And I think they're so worried about, you know, relying on that help down low that, you know, the, the guard play, they're really not as aggressive as they'd like to be. Nye Black. Kari Nye Black. That's a great take by Kari Nye Black. She's really elevated her game. She has that step back jumper. She's able to take it to the hoop, but that's, that's what West Virginia needed right there in that moment. Pick up some momentum and start getting some quick scores and good shot selection. Out of bounds, knocked out by Gondrasek. You can see defensively for West Virginia, the, the mismatches in height. You have Kaiser on Horston, who's 6'2", KK Deans uh, on Davis, who's 6'2". I mean, so there's a lot of mismatches where West Virginia has got to be exactly right, Kaiser. <laughs> you got to get in those passing lanes. You have to be up and create difficult passes. You can't just let Tennessee pass, pass, pass around the perimeter where, you know, nothing's difficult because you're so worried about help defense. 
Lobbed in and knocked out by Nye Black. You know, you got to get hand, old school stuff, hand in the face, make that pass difficult because a few possessions where Tennessee was able to get those threes, West Virginia had their hands down, uh, and it makes it so much easier for Tennessee just to pass around the perimeter. Forced it into Davis, and the blocking foul, and Martinez limping again. Yeah, you can see it in Martina's face. She's just, something's a little bit uncomfortable for her, but KK Deans right there, she's moving. There's no doubt about it, but KK Deans does an excellent job of taking charges. So if there's an opportunity for her, she's going to try and get in position. Just not that time. Second foul on Deans. Forston inbounding the ball. Forston, born in Dallas, raised in Columbus, Ohio. Green. And a traveling call against her. A little bit better than six minutes remaining in the second quarter. But you can see where Tennessee, that's a great flare. In and out for Gondrasek and Martinez slamming the ball off the ankle of Horston. So West Virginia is going to inbound the ball to its basket. But you, you can see Esmeri Martinez. She's always around the ball. She knows exactly where to be. Just heads up play and able to regain possession. But Tennessee, as I was going to say, and I got trailed off there, uh, they do a great job of pushing, pushing West Virginia's guards, you know, well beyond that three-point line uh, where you set a ball screen. It doesn't matter. You, you're not in position to score. Under six shot from the elbow, no good, and out of bounds. It is Tennessee's ball. Kush Kittawa back in the game. Where's number 11, by the way, because she started playing basketball when she was 11 years old, and the letter K is the 11th letter of the alphabet. Mesmeri Martinez in there. Uh, they're battling. I, I, I had a feeling that there was going to be a call either way right there with Tamari Key and, and Martinez down low. Both going after it, trying to gain position. Tennessee leading by a pair. Foul call on West Virginia, number 12, Mesmeri Martinez. Her first foul for two. And that's the second time on an out-of-bounds play that Tennessee just made it look a little too easy. West Virginia's got to communicate in the paint on those switches. And the foul is uh, Smith was driving to the basket, the blocking foul, and Tennessee's ball. Martinez. She's going to be, have to be very, very careful these next few possessions. Morell's shot no good. Gondrasek saves it at the end line or the sideline. Martinez, it's a pair. And, and you kind of saw that coming with Kush Kittawa in the game as well as Key. They're going to run straight to the paint in that defensive transition. That's a heads up play by Esmeri Martinez just to lag behind and wait, knowing her defender's in the paint. Oh, it was like hot potato. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking, man, is it nice interior passing or is that like hot potato? So we've got a timeout on the Big 12 now ESPN Plus. Lady Val lead by two. Tennessee leading by two. Nye Black, shot block, shot there off the attempt by Gondrasik. Morrison having a great job 
uh, for Tennessee. She's done a nice job on Kaiser Gondrzic defensively. And there's just so much height on this Tennessee team. Uh, even their guards are 6'1", 6'2". And I thought that West Virginia's adjusted their defense nicely uh, to that challenge of making sure you have that weak side help and getting out in the passing lanes. But right now, we talked about rebounding being a key for both of these teams. Right now, Tennessee winning that battle 17-9. Uh, to nine. And it's funny, Lanny, with all of this height, you really haven't seen any you know, one on one post moves inside. They're battling for position in there, but no one really seems to find it. That's a great take by Nigla. Game tied. And Davis comes down and put Tennessee back in front. And Davis is just smooth. I mean, when, when she elevates on that jumper, she really rises up, and that's very difficult to defend. You can you can have a hand up, and you can be right there, but uh, that's a pretty pretty difficult shot. Gondrasek under the basket tried to spin it back, could not. Three and a half minutes left before intermission. Just get was pass and a foul. It's on Hemingway. And that's where Jayla Hemingway, she needs to, she knows she has weak side help. Your teammates need to communicate that behind you so that you feel comfortable stepping off and then getting in front of that post. You need to get in front and allow your weak side help to be there. Shot no good by Burrell. Scramble loose ball and a tie up. It is uh, Tennessee's ball. Jump ball possession. Mounders led by six at one point during the first quarter. And it was 17 15 in favor of West Virginia after one. But much of the second quarter, Tennessee has led. Horston's pass in, stolen by Gondrasek. In and a chance. For another one. Man, was that pretty. And that's just great defense. And she completely turns Burrell three times and then adjusts her body back to the left and draws the foul. That was an incredible play. You could see her face after. She wanted that. She was pretty determined going one-on-one -on -one in transition right there. Gondrasek, 14 points. Just cut away into Horston. And foul going the other way. Horston, her second foul of the game. That's a great help play by Rochelle Norris coming over and just being big. That's all you need to do. You're 6'5", stand up straight. It's all you need to do for your teammates. In West Virginia, you can tell they're only switching one through three right now. So the fours and fives, you know, they have to communicate and they have to let their guards know they're there and help. Her second. With 2.46 left in the second quarter, Hemingway to inbound the ball. Norris to Hemingway. Nine black. Corey, nine black. Corey with eight points. And that's a great take. And Kari's playing extremely smart right now. She knows going up against uh, Kish Kittawa at 6'4", she's not going to be a one-on-one -on -one post player underneath. She's utilized, bringing her out, utilizing her strengths off the, off the dribble, uh, getting great shot fakes and getting to the basket. Off the window for Kish Kittawa. I love that, that even in a close game, Kish Kittawa, after she banks it, you still can't help yourself. You turn around and kind of laugh. I mean, every player, no matter what, no matter what, you know, moment in the game, you still kind of laugh every time you bank a shot like that. And 
one foul here is uh, on uh, foul call on Tennessee number twelve, Ray Burrell. On Burrell. Yeah, Burrell kind of <laughs> gave some eyes after that one. I don't know if she liked it. There's just a little bit of a mix up there on the handoff. It's Burrell's third foul. She checks out. That's a tough one for your third. And Destiny's salary comes in. Well, Gondrasek, 11 of 12. No, Meg, add another one to the good free throw numbers for Kaiser. Now 13 of 14 from the line. And that, that just has to be a point of emphasis for West Virginia because they do a great job of getting to the free throw line. And if you're not going to convert there, then there's no point doing it. Salaries three attempts <laughs> off the rim, but Walker got it. Shot short. North for West Virginia and a whistle. And despite not hitting that shot from salary, what ball movement by Tennessee? I mean, it, they just work the ball. They make West Virginia get out of position for rebounds. They make them move defensively. And that's exactly what West Virginia needs to start doing. Extend out. And, oh, yeah. You can. You see where Key kind of wrapped her arms around Nye Black's neck just a bit. Nyblock just four of 12 this year at the free throw line. Mountaineers lead the Lady Vols by two, now by three. West Virginia switches to a 2-3 zone here in this possession, so you'll see Tennessee really spread it out, work, but that's also going to leave them a little vulnerable to rebounding. And a tie-up, good block there from the shot by Green. And Coach Carey, moving to a 2-3, that's something that he does not usually do. So I think with the, the height advantage of Tennessee, I think he's just giving a different look uh, in, in trying to slow down that penetration. Final minute of the second quarter. Back out in the corner to Hemingway. Rebound by Walker. Tennessee in transition. Davis. Six points. Thirty seconds. And that's what West Virginia, again, you got to move the ball. You got to make the defense of Tennessee have to adjust, have to move. So make them make a mistake. And 17 seconds on the game clock, eight on the shot clock, and it's turned off now. We've got a foul. Number zero, Renia Davis hit with the foul. Nye Black. Checking in for Tennessee, number 10, Jesse Rennie. Jesse Rennie is in. 5'8", sophomore. From Australia. Nye Black, 10 points. She's having a great first half. She's struggled the last couple of games with foul trouble and really hasn't been able to you know be more consistent in those two games so uh, we talked with coach Carey the other day as she hits the second and he laughed and said yeah I had a long talk with her before this game about staying out of foul trouble and uh, making sure that she's on the floor 10 seconds five Shot and then green, the and we are at halftime. West Virginia 30. Interior passing again. Kush Kittawa with the easy finish on the left hand side. As we mentioned, she has six points. And for West Virginia, Kaiser Gondrzic 
doing a really nice job of, of getting into those gaps, penetrating on the left-hand side with the finish. She's doing a nice job defensively as well. She has two steals, three assists, finally able to connect from deep. I'm sure Coach Perry would like to see her hit a few more of those here in this second half. And, and Nye Black is really having a day for West Virginia, 11 points. You saw two blocks that she has, one block right there, and a great job of getting to the rim. She's really working that high post area nicely uh, against a mismatch with Tennessee and some of the height that she is facing. Tennessee will have the ball for the start of the third quarter with Ray Burrell to inbound the ball from right in front of our location. All right, here we go. Tennessee 2-0, West Virginia 3-0. And a foul as Davis went to the basket in the first Foul of the second half coming nine seconds in. Foul call to West Virginia, number 14, Kari Nyblack, her first. Nyblack's first foul. Halftime story, number wise. I think the rebounds definitely stand out. West Virginia wanted to do a good job of crashing those boards, but I think not only has Tennessee controlled the boards, they've really been able to slow down that transition game from West Virginia. Davis, an 80% free throw shooter. Renaya from Jacksonville, Florida, all section first team a year ago. Rebound put back by Green. Man, and that's, you hate to see that. That's a pet peeve. When you have the position on a free throw, you should never give that up. But uh, Tennessee, you got to give them credit. Crashing the boards extremely hard, going right back up with it was Green. Martinez into Gondrasek. Kaiser Gondrasek. Gondrasek, 17 points. Suarez missed the three. And here comes Deans. Got Gondrasek out in front. Oh man, that one stings. But that, that's what you can see. When West Virginia is able to control the, control the glass, get out and transition, they had a three-on-one opportunity right there. You know Kaiser wants that one back, but what a pass from Deans. Burrell, Davis the rebound. And Martinez with another rebound. Foul, Dean's going to go to the line. But again, West Virginia, when they are able to secure that rebound, they're going to get out in the lanes, even if they don't have numbers. You see KK Dean's just going one-on-one -on -one right there. Again, I think she's got to lower that shoulder, get in there, and try to get that strong finish. We saw a couple Thursday night where she was out in transition, and just instead of adjusting her body to the basket, she's kind of waiting for that foul. She needs to turn and go up strong. Now, I guess I'm nitpicking like a coach would. I mean, <laughs> as a player, yes, that's exactly what you need to do. Get in there, draw the foul, get to the free throw line. 38-34. Dean's her first two points of the game. And Walker. Lays it in, four points. And Dean's lost it. Tennessee gets the ball, trailing by three. I think they, they missed an opportunity right there for Green to go one-on-one -on -one against Nyblack inside. Davis a shot in and out. The rebound for Martinez. And Nyblack missed one in close. Loose ball. And the tie-up, it is uh, West Virginia's ball. 
Man, there's a there's a bubble on that rim for West Virginia with these layups. You know, with these rebounds we've gotten from Martinez the other day, Mike Carey was saying that if he was a coach against Martinez, he'd tell his players, I don't care whether you get the rebound, just don't let her get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Because, you know, we talked about she just has that knack for finding the ball around the rim, so that makes it very difficult to block her out because she's constantly moving, she's chasing the ball down. Uh, so they've done a nice job against uh, Esmeri Martinez as of now. Anderson Smith shot no good, but Nyblock gets the ball off the rim. 17 seconds on the shot clock. And the uh, block there by Green. Walker off the iron. Quickly, Deans. She hurries four on two. Madison Smith. That's a three. West Virginia is going to look to generate their offense. They play w better at a higher tempo with energy when they are running the lanes and getting out in transition, but they have to secure that rebound first. But Tennessee has done a great job on the boards thus far. Second time of the game that West Virginia is led by six. Right now, oh, I'm sorry, Lenny. No, go ahead. You think that right now, I think Tennessee, they got to look inside to Tamari Key. There is a huge height advantage right inside. I'd go one-on-one -on -one, uh, against Nyblock. Suarez with the jumper. Fade away. She's got six. Pass goes out of bounds. And that angle is just not there. You got to bring that ball over to the left hand side just a little bit for that entry pass. That was a straight line pass that Esmeri was just, she was not going to handle at that moment. Keys pass out of bounds. Big time Miss Q. Definitely the right cut from from Walker underneath, but you know, just a not the right pass, that's for sure. Madison Smith, two threes in the game. Again, these are those possessions just, oh man, getting bailed out again. Just West Virginia, it, the ball stayed on the right side of the floor the entire time. They were dribbling too much. I mean, there's just no movement. It makes it very easy on, on Tennessee and, and Tamara Key, Tamaria, or excuse me, Keen just needs to recognize, you know, stand straight up. Don't bail West Virginia out when the shot clock's running down like that. Martinez misses the shot, but Hemingway gets it now to Gondrasek. And you can hear Coach Carey and a bunch of the girls yelling post. They need to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups inside. You need to let those defenders, those post defenders, play them on us because right now they're able to help so much on all the guard players, the shot clock violation rings. Because without those posts being big and taking up space down low and forcing those post defenders to guard them, it makes it awfully difficult on those guards that are trying to come off of on-ball screens and try to work the paint. That allows for so much help defense. Horston banks one in. Two-point game. Out of bounds by Horston. And just about happened.
back and let's take a look at some of the defensive play. And Tennessee's done a nice job. They've been aggressive against West Virginia all night. I think West Virginia has been a little sloppy at times, taking quick shots, as you saw Kaiser right there. They're trying to force it at the end of the shot clock. But West Virginia is just, they're catching the ball too far out. They're wasting too much time on the shot clock dribbling. When they move the ball from sideline to sideline, when they get good cuts and get that defense of Tennessee moving, they've had good opportunities. Deans with the inbound. Forced in the steal. Esmeri Martinez really working inside right now. Suarez's shot not good and a foul. Looks like it's on Madison Davis, her first. And anytime the player is elevated up in the air like that, the refs are going to have to call it. Martinez the rebound. KK Deans. That's and, and that's the cleanest look that I've seen West Virginia get. And go figure, you start down low, you come off correctly off that 45 degree angle screen, you're gonna be wide open. They've gotta get more movement and better angles on the offensive end as you see the, the tie up at half court. I mean, setting up screens is just as important as, you know, as when you're coming off of it. You need to come off of it correctly at an angle, but setting that screen up is so important. And it, you see exactly what happens when you do the right things as KK Deans gets a wide open three. Steal by Gondrasek. And she's fouled going to the line. And that's a smart play by Gondrasek, not only on the defensive end, does a great job of getting that, that outside hand into the passing lane. That's exactly what you need to do in order to get a steal and get out in the lane. But uh, she knew exactly what she was doing. Going against Horston, she's 6'2". She kind of probably felt that there was a block shot coming on. She forced her body into her and drew the foul. That was exactly right. That's number three on Horston. Gondra 6, 17 points in the game. Up next for West Virginia, Baylor on Thursday. Defending national champions for all intents and purposes what, with what happened in 2020. Uh, Suarez in close, couldn't put it in. Mountaineers by five. The bounds to Tennessee's ball. Tennessee, Tennessee, by the way, is added a game. Uh, they're going to play Furman on Thursday. And then at Texas a week from today, Kelly Harper, head coach, second year. Such a storied women's basketball program under Pat Summit and the eight national championships that she won. Oh, here, Kelly Harper, by the way, star player at Tennessee in the 90s on three national championship teams. Could be four on one. Hit hard and down and... Uh, Tennessee. Going to the line, Rochelle Norris. Her second, number four. That was good timing by West Virginia. Kaiser kind of just laid that pass out there so that Rochelle could you know, collect herself, get her footwork correct, and have time to go up and get the pass and then draw the foul. Yeah. 
Norris' first point of the game. And so it's the third time that the Mountaineers have led by six. We've got a lane violation on Tennessee. Here's a true second chance point. And this is a, a definitely a point in the game for West Virginia and Tennessee. That's a seven point difference right here. That's exactly what I was saying. That's a momentum shift moment right there with seven points. You're going to get a stop, come down, try to make it nine. But Tennessee, that's a great response with Green inside. She's been working hard in there all day. It's nice to get that reward and get the opportunity for an and one as the foul gets called on Kari Nyblak. And now Kean Green, who's from Philadelphia, played three seasons at Liberty. Her dad played basketball at Waynesburg University, a place that is very dear to my heart. Green, seven points. Waynesburg University, a school just a little bit north of the West Virginia Pennsylvania line. Four point game, 240 left in the third quarter. Tennessee goes with a little extended 2-3. Really looking to almost trap those sideline passes. Tennessee's ball. Jump ball possession goes to Tennessee. And that's such a momentum shift right there for Tennessee. As I said, they came down, down seven. You get the three-point play, you come down, you switch up your defense, you extend. Confused West Virginia uh, and able to get the ball back. And Green really working hard in there uh, against Rochelle Norris. Kushkidawa missed it with the left hand. Madison Smith shot off the iron. Up in front to Burrell. And just nobody back in transition for West Virginia. It just looked way too easy. And I'm not sure how that happens. You miss a three, you got to sprint back. All of Tennessee's players were back. It was like uh, West Virginia was in quicksand. Mary Martinez. Martinez. Four point game, minute and a half about. And the steal. Gondrasek, three on one. Dean plays it in. That's just an unselfish play by Gondrzic. Uh, recognizes the two on one. Dean stays with it, and it's a great pass. Timeout called with a minute 14 remaining in the third quarter. West Virginia 51, Tennessee 45. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. With the uh, Mountaineers leading by six. A note I gave you earlier in the game, uh, Tennessee 6-0 and in its history against West Virginia. First time that Tennessee and West Virginia have played since 2007. And Tennessee with the ball in the final moments of this third quarter. West Virginia switches to a 2-3 zone here. Interesting pass there. Gondrasek with 17 points, but has not had a point since early in the third quarter. Norris, shot blocked. 40 seconds. Chris Kittawa. And Martinez with another rebound. 
Yeah, and seen a lot of points left on the board by both teams missing layups. Mike Carey calls a timeout, 30-second timeout. Mike Carey, who won his 700th game during the recent West Virginia trip to Las Vegas. One of the things Mike was talking to us about was how honored he's been that he's had this opportunity to stay in West Virginia, continue to be a, an important part of this great state. Carey, who uh, has 413 wins as the head coach of the Mountaineers from Clarksburg, West Virginia, and one of the biggest wins ever, I guess, in the history of the women's program, the upset victory over Notre Dame in February of 2012. Plus that win to win the Big 12 title in tournament championship 2017. Off the screen, under six shot. And a save into the corner by Norris. That's a great hustle play by the Mountaineers. Kaiser misses the three, Rochelle runs it down, but a great heads up play by Martinez to find Hemingway down low. And those are the things, just the little hustle plays, what they can generate for your for your team uh, right when you need it. There's seven seconds on the clock, and just Rochelle Norris running down and being able to save that gets her an opportunity here at the free throw line. And that's just a great extra effort and just a, a heads-up play by Martinez. And Hemingway being in the right spot at the right time needs to get this second free throw for the Mountaineers. Hemingway from uh, Collier, Tennessee, which is uh, near Memphis. Hemingway, who played last year at Mississippi State. This guess could have uh, goes to the bench. Jayla Hemingway missing the two free throws. Key gets the rebound for Tennessee. Two seconds, one. And that is the end of the third That's quarter. Big 12 SEC Challenge on the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Mountaineers lead by six. Spare, spare, spare. Spare's spare here. Angelica. Hello, this... can you hear me? Dan? Yeah, Hello? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So I can hear you much better. You're okay. still kind of buried in the, you know, in the down here on the floor, but I can well, hear you. Now that they cranked up the music, I can't hear you as well. After three quarters, West Virginia leading Tennessee 51 to 45. Kyler Grand Gondrasik, 17 points in the game. And she's really been the pace car for West Virginia from the beginning. She really brings the energy. She hustles on both ends of the floor. That's what you got to love about her. 17 points, five steals, four assists. I mean, you can't ask for a better game from your leader than that. Dean Smith, Nye Black, Martinez, and Gondrasik in for West Virginia. Footer by Nyblack comes up wide left. Burrell, three fouls in the game. And tie up, it is Tennessee's ball. Man, lots of bunnies being missed. That's a great cut by Renaya Davis to the basket. Caught KK Dean sleeping, but just couldn't, couldn't connect in the paint. Horston will inbound the ball. 
West Virginia trying to improve to 4 and 0. Tennessee trying to improve its early mark to 3 and 0. Davis. And Key. It's a great job of Key just getting that position in front of Martinez. She gets caught behind, and it's an easy two. Three, no good. Martinez, good. Martinez doing what she does so often. And she's doing it with a, a bloody nose right now. I'm surprised the rest, ref has not, uh, have, haven't seen that. I want to take her out to clean that up. A salary sent down. Well, she cleaned it up herself and told them, no, I don't need to come off. I guess that's one way to do it. Now Black with her third personal. And Burrell, 60% free throw shooter. Yeah, and you see Martinez right away feels it and as she ran down the court you can kind of see the blood coming out but she's a tough player and you got to love a player like that when you have the confidence of, of taking an open shot when you know that you have someone underneath that's going to clean up the boards steal by Horston and those on-ball screens for the West Virginia is continuously running. They're just not working. The screen isn't there. They're not waiting on the screen, and there's just too much dribbling where they're just clogging it up, and, and Tennessee is able to just kind of stand there and double-team. That's a nice back door by Kaiser. But key with the block. Davis. And out of bounds. Tennessee's ball two minutes into this fourth quarter. But they, they just, they, West Virginia needs to do more movement on the offensive end and just way less dribbling. And Burrell is followed by Smith. Or no, excuse me, not against Smith. Yeah, hold on, West Virginia. Number 12, Mary Martinez. Her and Martinez. Third, number two. Checking in for the Mountaineers, number 31. That's Michelle her fourth? Morris. At the line for Tennessee, Ray Burrell is shooting two. from Las Vegas, Nevada. Mom played for the University of Nevada, Reno. And it is now a one-point game. Dad was a track and field All-American there as well. So no doubt about her athletic ability. I mean, you just Tennessee forces West Virginia so far out. The screens aren't being set at the right angles. You know, they're, they're dribbling too much, and Tennessee's too long uh, to just stand around the perimeter and dribble. It's fallen Tamari Key. That is her fourth. And you can see just the hip action. Kaiser catches it right in the thigh there. Uh, but that's a that's a big fourth foul there on Tamari Key because she's done an excellent job of of guarding that interior paint for Tennessee and West Virginia it hasn't really been able to do much in the paint with her presence inside. That's Twenty three. points once again. Burrell shot blocked by Nye Black. And out of bounds. Went for Ragondrasik. It is the uh, 14th time in her career that she's had 20 points in a game. And the fourth time this year. And this is the fourth game.
looking at a shot clock issue. They're going to set it at 16. Kari doesn't Certainly get the not. call, but when you come over and anytime your hands are down, the ref is going to call it. You got to come over straight up, allow Burrell to come into you, but that was a great, a great penetration by Burrell. And Burrell, five of six at the free throw line just in this quarter alone. And there haven't been too many trips to the free throw line for Tennessee. Looking foul that will send Smith to the line. Just a little bit less than seven minutes remaining. And this is where West Virginia has to be careful. They've done a great job of getting to the free throw line, but only 12 of 21 right now. They're doing a good job of drawing those fouls, but they got to start converting at the free throw line. Madison. Nesma Martinez will get called for the foul, but as she pushes Kushkitawa off of that block, she's got to let go. There's just play defense right there. There's no need for that foul. Once she is off the block, let go, play defense. Number four on Martinez in the foul department. Horston to Kishkitawa. And Burrell went down hard and foul. Stopped the clock with 634 remaining. Tennessee still doing a great job on the offensive glass. Burrell just I mean, no one blocks her out. No one puts a body on her, and she just goes right to the ball. Number five on Martinez. That's a big loss for West Virginia at this stage in the game. Too much time left on the clock. 10 points in the game. Uh, looks like you eight rebounds. With 634 remaining in the fourth quarter. And it's interesting. We talked about Martinez and she had 22 rebounds the other night, but in the, against a team like Tennessee, she's not the type of player that's boxing out underneath and going to get the ball. She just kind of has that feel of where the ball is. And as Coach Carey told us, she chases the ball. So against a team like Tennessee that has six foot one, six two, six three, six four, all over the floor, that's going to be a little bit more difficult of a challenge to go up and just try to chase the ball because they're going to get there first. Here's Burrell at the free throw line again. Seven of eight at the free throw line just in this quarter alone. Got her sick. Her third three of the game. And that's a that's a huge three. She doesn't come off the screen. She flares to the corner, wide open. And that's what that's what big play, big time players do. You knock down a shot when your team needs it. Horston's shot, no good, but the Tennessee 
Lady Vols have it with Davis. Man, West Virginia just giving up so many second chance opportunities. Cummings Check comes in. And well, this time, Key and Green will go to the line. Green with eight points in the game. Sixty-one to fifty-eight. Angelica. Well, Coach Carey said pregame something that was crucial for this game was to keep Kari Nyblak out of foul trouble. She's got four fouls, all came here in the second half. Eleven points in the first, but no production, with the exception of three round three rebounds for Nyblak as she's on the bench, guys. And Kari had eleven points in the first half, but none in the second half. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Apparently fired up. Cummins had it for a moment, but then lost it to Burrell. And Burrell has been quite a story in this fourth quarter. Yeah, that's a great decision in transition. A, a great pull up. She has great elevation on her jumper. And as you mentioned, she's done a great job at the free throw line, just meaning she's been more aggressive than she was able to be in the first half when she was on the bench with those three fouls. Gondrasek. Cummings the rebound. In West Virginia it looks a little tired right now. A lot of standing around, not a whole lot of movement. The shot by Kaiser looked short in her legs. This is a, a good time for West Virginia to have a break. 4.52 remaining in the fourth quarter. Mike Carey. Tennessee, number 11, uh, Kush 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 Referees Mark Zentz, Kevin Heftel, and Meta Christensen. And Smith to inbound it. Just over four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Number sick off the screen set by Norris. Dean shot no good. Tennessee has the lead in the ball. And you see that for West Virginia, when someone's penetrating, there's not a lot of movement. The guards need to work that three-point line, get in the eye line of whoever is penetrating so that they can make an easier pass. You make that defense have to adjust. Checking in for the Mountaineers, double zero, Chamber, But when you just stand on the perimeter and watch your teammate penetrate, you know, it, you make it real easy on the defense. As you see, Kari Nyblock doing a nice job of, of mixing it up, getting in the middle of that pass to Green. And so Hemingway's in now. Deans is out. Tennessee by a point. What about that shot there? Yeah, West Virginia's offense just looks real out of whack right now. And as I mentioned, they're taking quick shots. They're not taking the best shot. Um, there's no movement. And it looks like that's Tennessee kind of has it easy on defense right now. You just have to stand there because West Virginia's not doing a whole lot of moving. And Horston. Horston's been impressive. She plays very smart, and, and, and Coach Harper said she kind of had to tell her, let the game come to you, and you can tell. She really does. She doesn't make too many mistakes. She plays smart defensively and takes great shots on the offensive end. Only a sophomore. Tennessee by three. Man, the last few possessions of West Virginia have just looked like an entirely different team. 
And on the other side, Tennessee has energy. They're still moving. They're running. Uh, the momentum shift uh, from that time when they were down seven has completely changed. You made that great point way back then when it could have been nine, but Tennessee turned it around. I think Kari Nyblak just uh, breathed a huge sigh of relief right there that it was not on her. And Davis will get called with the offensive foul. Mountaineers with the ball down by three. Just a bit over two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And it's Dean's crazy. Back in. I'm sorry, Lanny. It's crazy for how poorly the last few possessions for West Virginia have been. They're only down three. I mean, they're, they're still a one possession ball game, uh, having had such bad possessions. Minute 56. Worston almost had the steal, but it'll be West Virginia's ball. Yeah, and, it, and with a 6-2 defender, you're not going to lob a pass to a 5-9 guard. <laughs> you just you have to make better decisions. Yeah. Horston the steal. Horston just, I mean, just talked about her. She's done a great job getting in those passing lanes. She, she uses her length to her advantage so well. She gets her arms out there, and she's done a great job on the defensive end. Eight seconds on the shot clock. It is Tennessee's ball. We set the clock to 20. Michelle Norris pleading her case that she didn't touch the ball as it went out of bounds. She's with her teammates here in Morgantown today. And, uh, Emily Saunders who was born in Beckley and was on three West Virginia State Championship, was on three, in three championship games, and it's gonna be Tennessee's ball. Minute 18 remaining. Marston. Okay, what a smart play by Horston. See, West Virginia completely turns their back, not in position, she just sneaks in after inbounding the ball. Hits the three. three. Wow. Madison what a big time shot. Smith. Now a two point game. And what's so important about that three, hardly any time was taken off of the clock. And, and time right now is just so important really does it with a hand, with Burrell's hand in her face. Or, I'm sorry, that might have been key. But, uh, and that was nothing but net. Huge three for Madison Smith. Um, Davis. And Keys. Key. West Virginia switches their defense right now. They go into a 2-3, really packing that paint. Smart move. 15 seconds, shot clock. Green misses the shot, rebound by Nyblack. That's a, a great decision to go 2-3 right there, pack the paint, able to secure the rebound. 20 seconds on the shot clock and just under 21 of the game clock. As the Mountaineers have the ball trailing by two. 12 at the free throw line this year. Tie game and a timeout. Timeout, Tennessee. 
Also, don't forget that for West Virginia, as Mary Martinez fouled out with about six and a half minutes left in this fourth quarter. And Tennessee defensively did a great job here in this fourth quarter. Uh, they've had block shots, they've had steals, uh, and really able to convert on the offensive end has been the biggest difference. Horston did an incredible job on the defensive end. She does a great job of getting in passing lanes. Uh, she plays very, very smooth for a sophomore. Did a great job of getting that outside hand out. That's a great block, again, by Horston. She's, she's just been all over it defensively, and on the offensive end has done a nice job as well. But West Virginia had a, a ton of sloppy possessions, and like I said a minute or two ago, it was shocking that they were still only down by three. As I recall, you had pointed out that there was uh, the Mountaineers was it recently had a 2-3 defense. Yes, they switched to a 2-3 out of that last timeout. What, what would be the wise choice defensively here now? With I would stay with that 2-3. I thought that it mixed them up a little bit. I thought that uh, they've allowed Tennessee to get to the paint too easy all game, and I think that 2-3 has mixed things up uh, with packing the paint. They're a little more gun-shy to get uh, into the interior, but I would stay that 2-3. The last two possessions, uh, they've had a turnover. But it looks like right now, I think they're going to go back man to man. Nope, they switch back. Now they're in the 2 3 again. Seven seconds. Stepped on the line. Just under five remaining in the fourth timeout. quarter. West Virginia timeout. We're tied at 66. Pretty much the game we expected in terms of coming down to the end. Yeah, absolutely. There was no doubt that's how this game was going to go. And as West Virginia goes into that 2-3, you see Kari does a great job of staying straight up, moving her feet. Davis just gets caught right there on that baseline. Yeah, the trying to sneak West Virginia 3-0 coming in. Wins over Fresno State, LSU, and North Alabama. Tennessee, two wins. One by 40 over Western Kentucky, the other by 17 over East Tennessee, and we're going to jump it up one more time to start the overtime. Green against Norris. And the Mountaineers have it first in overtime. Nye Black. This is the three. Kushkitawa, the rebound. West Virginia stays in that 2 3 zone. Davis follows her shot. Uh, Corey Nye Black yep, gets caught playing from behind and I understand she's playing with four fouls right now so she's probably going to be a little leery but you got to get in front of that that was a, a direct entry pass into green just too easy Norris misses the shot possession arrow favors Tennessee jump ball possession goes to Tennessee in West Virginia right now, staying in that 2-3, they're going to force Tennessee to beat them from the outside, beat them from the perimeter. Burrell to Horston. That's and a tough West play. Virginia. Tough play by K.K. Deems right there. Obviously the mismatch in size, but just uses her body, gets in position, and is able to come down with it. A significant mismatch, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Gondrasek. Ties the game. Career high for Kaiser. Previous high, 24 twice in her career. Now has 25. And speaking of 25, it's Horston who brings the ball over the line. 310. Into green. Out to Davis. Forget it. Forget it. 
Norris, Smith. Three shot. <laughs> Feeling pretty lucky right there. Nice two-man game from Kaiser Gondrzic and Madison Smith. And you'll take a bounce any way you can get it in overtime. Four three of the game for Madison Smith. And that back line of West Virginia right now, I know they're tired, but that pass can't go through there. You gotta have your hands up. But I guess if you're six five, you can also just rip it away. But I'd like to see that back line with their hands up. Make it more difficult for those passes to get inside. And Norris with the ball for West Virginia under the basket of Tennessee. 215 left in overtime. Off balance shot by Dean. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's West Virginia's ball. And right here, just a great job of Kaiser Gondrzic penetrate and pitch to the open Madison Smith that eh, might as well have a bounce in. And Martinez, man, <laughs> I mean, you'd love to see that. She's pretty happy for her teammate. Two minutes. Kaiser That's a tough left. I, I saw that coming. That left lane looked wide open. She has such a quick first step and adjusts her body right at the last moment. Yeah, for a time two. called by Tennessee as Gondrasik has scored the last five points. Game at 66 near the closing moments of regulation. Tennessee with the ball. Suarez. Horston, it's Burrell, baseline. Davis. Green. And fouled. Not the person that you wanted to have foul at that moment, Nye Black. And so Kari is out of the game. West Virginia, number 14, Kari Nye Black. Second West Virginia player to foul out in this game. The other being Martinez, and now Blessing Edgefor comes in. And against that 2-3, you saw Tennessee adjust. They had Burrell running, this, running the baseline, sneaking in there behind. And that's where you really miss Esmeri Martinez and her presence down low. You have KK Deans on that backside of that 2-3. <laughs> where you could have Mesmeri Martinez, you know, a bigger rebounder, bigger presence inside, but with her on the bench, that's difficult. So Kean Green misses the first of two. Seventy-three, sixty-nine, minute and a half in overtime remaining. Tennessee goes to that extended uh, two three, very aggressive in that two three, looking to trap. West Virginia just needs to take care of the basketball, and, and time is on their side right now. And out of bounds, Tennessee's ball with a minute twelve left in overtime. Davis trying to step around, got the shot off, but now West Virginia Gondrasek has it. Minute to play in overtime. And a timeout called by Mike Carey. Hemingway's coming in, just under 59 seconds remaining. 73 times previously, Tennessee won all six. The inbound from Gondrasek. 50 seconds. Ten on the shot clock. And a foul Hemingway going to the basket and will go to the line. Foul call on Tennessee. And that's a smart play by Hemingway. Knows that there's still enough time to get to the basket, potentially draw a foul, which she does. Just a heads-up play from uh, the Mississippi State transfer. Her first point of the game, rather significant. 
Yeah, I'd say so. You're gonna have you're gonna have one or two points. Uh, why not in overtime to extend a lead? Edge of four to inbound at full court press. Four point game. Calls on Davis. And West Virginia just 62% from the free throw line right now, so just <laughs> obviously smart coaching by uh, Kelly Harper. Foul right away and, and have an opportunity for West Virginia to miss at the line and get back on offense. KK Deans so far this year, 12 of 15 at the free throw line. Double figures in points. She has 11 now. Big free throws by KK Deans. Took along with a two from Hemingway. 20 seconds. And there's not much. Davis. Yeah, not much you can do against that. That was good rotation defensively. Davis just, like I mentioned, she elevates on that jumper. It's so pretty. And they foul with just under 11 seconds remaining in overtime. Foul on Tennessee, number 25, Jordan Horston, her fourth. Horston's fourth. And it will be Madison Smith. At the line for West Virginia, Madison Smith shoots two. Smith, 14 points in the game. 27 for Kaiser Gondrasek, a career high. Only a 25% three-point shooter. You need a quick three here. If not, you got to get two and foul right away. There's just the time is, is not on the side of the Lady Vols right now. Suarez's shot is short. Smith taking it home. Nope, decides to come back out, and we are at the end of the game. West Virginia improves to 4 0. Tennessee suffers its first loss of the year. Man, what a game. I mean, just when you thought, as I mentioned, that Tennessee was going to close it out, they started to have all the momentum swing on their side. West Virginia fights back. Not always pretty, but they fight back and able to come up with it in overtime.